In this lesson, we will continue with the Delphi's numeric data types. We will explore floating point numbers. One of the most fascinating values we use in mathematics is pi. Pi is a decimal number that is used in formulas to calculate the surface or the circumference of a circle. What makes it fascinating is that it is never ending. Pi just goes on and on. And pi has no repetitive pattern, regardless how long the number is. Delphi even has a built-in function to return the value of pi. The function is called, well, you guessed it, pi. Later in our demo, we will use the pi function in our code. The numbers we use for decimals are called floating point numbers, because the decimal point can move or float left or right between the digits, depending on the required precision and scale of the number. The first floating point number we will explore is single. A single is a floating point number that takes four bytes in storage. It's called a single because it is a single precision number. A single allows for seven significant digits. But what does that mean? Before we go on, let's first see what is a significant digit. You will hear me often talk about significant digits when I refer to the capacities of floating point numbers. Let's look at the characteristics of significant digits. Firstly, all non-zero numbers are significant. For example, the number 36.7 has three significant digits. That is the 3 and the 6 in the front of the point and the 7 after the point. Secondly, if a number has a zero between two non-zero digits, then the zero is also significant. For example, the number 1025 has four significant digits, so the zero is now also counted as a significant digit. But leading zeros in a floating point number is not significant. For example, the number 0.54 only has two significant digits, and the number 0.0054 also only have two significant digits. Trailing zeros to the right of the decimal are significant, so the number 92.00 has four significant digits. Because it shows a decimal, the trailing zeros after the decimal point are also counted as significant. But if we move the decimal point two places to the right, to make a whole number with trailing zeros, it becomes interesting. Now, the trailing zeros are not significant if it is a whole number with no decimal. For example, the number 9200 has only two significant digits. Okay, now let's go back to the single data type. A single has seven significant digits before and after the decimal point. Now it makes sense why it is called the floating point number. So if pi is a single, only the first seven digits will be stored. If you require more precise calculations, you can declare a double. You guessed it. It is called a double because it provides double precision. A double uses 8 bytes and it allows for 15 significant digits in storage. So if pi is a double, the first 15 digits will be stored, like I show there with yellow numbers on the screen. You may also be familiar with a real. A real is the same as a double. It also takes 8 bytes in storage and it allows for 15 significant digits. So for pi, it will store the same 15 significant digits as a double. The extended data type is 10 bytes with 19 significant digits. So with pi stored as an extended, the first 19 digits in yellow will be stored. Just like integer numbers, we must also convert floating point numbers to strings if we must display it as output in strings. The float to string function converts a floating point to a string. This example converts a single called SNG pi from a floating point number to a string before it assigns the results to a string called str small pi. And this example does the same with a double. And this one converts an extended floating point number to a string and assigns it to a string variable called str big pi. When we get floating numbers from inputs like edits and input boxes, they are strings. Before we can use them as numbers in calculations, we must first convert them from strings to floating point numbers with the string to float function. Here's an example of pi between single quotes. In this case, pi is a string. To make pi a number, we must use string to float before we can save it in the single variable called SNG fraction. This statement does the same with the string variable called strpi that we want to store in a double called dblpi. And this statement reads the text in an edit called edtpi, convert it from a string to a floating point number, and then assign it to an extended variable called ext big pi. Another function that enables us to convert the float to a string, with the added benefit of also shaping the format of the number, is called float to string f. 
We will get back to the float to string f function later. Let's first start a small project to explore some of the data types and functions we've seen so far in this lesson. Our project will show pi as a default value in an edit when the program starts up, but the user will also be able to enter his own numbers. When you click the button, the input and the edit must convert pi to a string and show it in this panel. And these three panels must also show pi in different fixed formats. If you want to start immediately and write the code with me, you can download the start and the solution files for the project from my Patreon page at patreon.com slash learndelphi. I posted the link in the video's description. Also go and look if Delphi 10.3 Community Edition is still available as a free download. That's what I'm using to record these lessons. The link is also in the video's description. After downloading the starter project, open it in Delphi. We will declare a variable of type single to store pi. The variable must be accessible to all the event handlers. When the form is created after we run the project, the form's onCreate event must show pi in this edit. And when the onClick event of the button is triggered, pi must be converted and displayed in different formats in these panels. So pi must be accessible in the event handlers of both components. Double click on the open space on the form surface. The default event for a form is onCreate. Go under the implementation section and type var SNGPy as single. SNGPy is a single variable that will be accessible to all the event handlers we create in this unit. Go between begin and end in the event handler for the forms on create event and type SNGPy colon equals pi. Here we use Delphi's built in pi function to get the value for pi. The pi function doesn't require an input parameter, it just returns the value of pi. The result is then assigned to the single variable we declared a few seconds ago, named SNGPy. This result will now be available to all the procedures used in this form. And it will be available from the moment the form is created in memory until the form is not in use anymore. Go to the next line and type this code. This statement takes the number we just saved into SNGPy and first convert it to a string with the float to string function before we assign it to the result of the text property of the edit called edt floating point number. Let's run the application. Pi displays immediately in the edit when the form is created. Close the form. Click the design tab to view your graphical user interface. Double click the format button. This creates the event handler for the onClick event of PTN format. Go between begin and end. Type three comments to separate input processing and output. Go under input and type this statement. Here we read the text in the edit called edt floating point number and first convert it to a floating point number with the string to float function before we assign it to the single variable that we declared under implementation. In this project, we will not do processing. So go under output and type this code. Here we read the value of the single variable called SNGPy and convert it from a floating point number back to a string so that we can assign it to the caption of the panel named PNLPy. Run the project. Click the button. And make sure your program shows pi in this panel. Close the form. Go to the next line under output and type this statement. Here we use the float to string f function. Notice the f in the back of the function's name. Let's see how it differs from the conventional float to string function. The float to string f function also converts a floating point number to a string, but it also gives you control over the format, the scale and the precision of the number. The float to string f function takes four inputs. The first parameter is the floating point number that you want to convert. Here I use pi between quotes, so in this case pi is a string. The second parameter is the format of the number. This function supports four different formats. This example formats the number to a fixed decimal format. The ff prefix is for float format. We will talk about some other formats in a moment. The third parameter sets the precision and the last parameter sets the digits. The result is then assigned to a floating point data type, in this case a single called SNG fraction. The result will be like this. 
This example does the same, except for the parameter that sets the digits. Two digits will format pi like this. Now let's look at the different formats with these two examples. You can use general number formatting with FFGeneral. This is how pi will be formatted with FFGeneral, with four digits and two digits. And these statements use the FF number format. And this is how it will look for the FF currency format, if we need to convert the floating point number to a currency. So the four values for the format parameter are FF fixed, FF general, FF number, and FF currency. Okay, now let's go finish our project. Here, we convert SNG pi to a floating point number while also formatting it to a fixed format with a precision of eight significant digits, of which four are decimal digits. Then we assign it to the caption of a panel named PNL fixed underscore eight underscore four. Notice how I named the panel to correspond with the format. Go to the next line and type this code. Here, we convert SNG pi to a floating point number while also formatting it to a fixed format with a precision of four significant digits, of which four are decimal digits. Then we assign it to the caption of a panel named PNL fixed underscore four underscore four. Go to the next line and type this. Here, we convert SNG pi to a floating point number while also formatting it to a fixed format, with a precision of four significant digits, of which two are decimal digits. Then we assign it to the caption of a panel named PNL fixed underscore four underscore two. Run the project. Click the button. This panel displays four decimal digits. If Pi had more numbers in the front of the decimal point, it will also display up to four digits to make it eight digits. This panel displays a less precise version of pi. Notice how the last two digits differ from the previous output because the number is rounded up. And this panel displays pi with only two decimal digits. You can also do this with any of the other floating point types, like double and extended. Next time, we will learn about monetary numbers when we explore the currency data type. If this lesson was helpful to you, please like and subscribe and share my lessons on social media. And thank you to my supporters on Patreon. And also thank you for watching. See you in the next lesson.